Greetings. I am Georgette Mayo for the Norgard Designs Global Lectures 2023. This year's global project theme is iHeart, which is a bead embroidery based design. Welcome to session one of Beads on a Base, a survey of bead embroidery artists. In this session, I will discuss the bead work of Native Americans, past and present. In upcoming sessions, you will notice the influence of Native American beadwork in many of our featured artists. Feel free to watch our sessions in any order. Some sessions will reference prior sessions, so you will want to watch them all. Now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, be patient, and you will hear my voice as I play the PowerPoint. Personally, my first memories of beadwork was from my parents buying me a pair of beaded moccasins on a road trip. I must have been about six years old and I was enthralled by the idea of beads sewn, being sewn on a wearable item like shoes. The technique must have been used, was known today as the lazy stitch, which is used to create beaded designs on clothing and accessories. So let's take the time to delve a little bit into the origins. And as Carrie of Carrie Beads notes, Native American beading takes beading to extreme artistic extremes. And hopefully, with these upcoming slides, which is a small sample, uh, you will see the artistic extremes that are created by Native American bead embroidery. Early bead work was accomplished by carving natural metals, materials into beads. Even before trade beads became common, numerous Native American societies were skilled in the art of bead embroidery and quilling. Native American bead artists utilized what they could find in their environment. Beads were made from natural stones, precious or not, bone, pearls, shells, and especially porcupine quills, which we have a slide that you're looking at right now. of porcupine quills. Native American bead embroidery, also known as applique beadwork, was first was developed first by tribes that produced detailed quill work. Quills were popular to use as beads because they already had a hole in them to string them eliminating some of the prep work. Quill work was considered a sacred art in and of itself. The process of creating beads from these materials was labor intensive with artists using stone tools or abrasive sand to shape them and drill holes by, sand, by hand. The most stunning examples of porcupine quill artistry were the plain Indian war shirts, each of which would take a skilled quill worker more than a year to embroider. Medicine bags, moccasins, jewelry, birch box, boxes, and baskets were other crafts frequently quilled in the past. Today, Native American quill work embroidery is nearly a lost art. Porcupine quills are difficult to work with and the quilled leather is more difficult to take care of than a beaded leather. Most quillers switched to beadwork 
when seed beads became widely available since beading uses many of the same skills as quilling, but is less grueling. However, some native artists are working to maintain traditional quilt artwork today, particularly among the Chippewa and Mi'kmaq tribes, where the crafting of birch bark quill boxes never completely died out. And the examples that we have on this page, on this slide, starting with the men's quilled moccasins are made out of buckskin, porcupine quills, and glass beads, and it's circa, circa 1900. A burst design, sunburst design, is incorporated into the quill work on the top of these men's moccasins. Starburst burst designs are also often seen on the hide paintings. The woman's dress, otherwise known as a good, good road woman, is made out of buckskin and porcupine quills, and it dates back to 1906. The dragonfly patterns in this quill work adornment of this dress are a symbol of change and transformation in American Indian culture. Native American beadwork as we know it has its origins in the arrival of the European explorers and settlers. Seed beads arrived in North America around 1770 and were traded for things like buffalo hide robes and horses. As the sea beads got smaller and smaller, the art of the Native American beadwork began to evolve, reflecting the traditional patterns established by Native Americans, weavers, and artisans. Sea beads and other types of beads hold significant cultural meaning for many Native American tribes. Crafters use them to tell stories, convey cultural values, and represent important concepts, such as the four cardinal directions or the balance between the physical and spiritual worlds. During the social turbulence surrounding Native Americans during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Creating beadwork became a way for Native Americans to hold on to their cultural identity. Using the designs that have already been passed down to them from previous generations was just one way for families to establish a family history, all by using beads. Beading continues to be a Native American specialty to this day, with hundreds of artisans producing necklaces, bracelets, and embroidered clothing for special events, dances, powwows, and the tourist trade. Most modern artisans buy their beads pre-made, but the Navajo and some of the Pueblo neighbors still make henshi beads, and that's spelled H-E-N-S-H-I-I, beads by hand out of shells and stone in a way that has not changed substantially for centuries. On this slide, we see what's known as a blanket strip and it's circa 1830. It was made in the Central Plains in the United States and most likely from the Lac Lakota or Teton Sioux Native American. It's made out of tan leather and glass beads. The cross within a circle, the principal design element on this blanket strip is one of the most visually powerful moffets in plain art. It symbolizes the circle of the world, the four directions, and the sacred center, 
concepts fundamental to the Plains view, worldview. The massive strip also conveys wealth and prestige. The beading is a blend of shorter lane stitch rolls and the longer spot stitch method, resulting in thousands of contrasting blue and white antique beads affixed to the leather. As glass beads became more plentiful through trade in the early decades of the 19th century, artists increasingly used them to present community affiliations, connections to place or status. The war shirt is made by the Crow Native American and the medium is tan leather, glass beads, pigment, wool cloth, ermine, human hair and feathers. This richly embellished garment, which embodies layers of spiritual and military meaning would have been worn by a man of great stature on ceremonial occasions made in Montana, United States. On this page, we're I'm featuring three items that were made and by Native Americans and from the collection of the Sherwood Spirits of America. The Northern Apparel Dispatch case circa 1870 is a classic style on be of beadwork on hard leather, boot leather. Tin cones border the flap, sides and bottom of the bag. Seed beaded and sewn with the original twist, twisted yellow okra fringe. Crow bag, possibly tobacco bag, circa 1875, featuring classic crow floral beadwork, Vanchinai fetish 19, from the 19th century. A large fetish is a rare in a rare size, and it features vivid bead beaded colors stuffed with buffalo hair and sweet grass. And I'm gonna point this out. So this is the one that I just referred to. This is the one that is possibly a tobacco bag. And This is a dispatch bag. So now we're going to take a look at a modern Native American artist who takes the beadwork to another level. Jamie Okuma is a Louise Zeno Shoshun Ban Nock Wakaki and Okinan, and I know I'm messing these words up, so please bear with me because I know that I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it's not done on purpose. Who is enrolled is also enrolled as a member of the Lakoya Band of Indians in Southern California, where she lives and works. She specializes in indigenous native North American art and design. Okuma's one of one of a kind pieces that are hand executed exclusively by the artist herself in all details of process while designing ready to wear fashions. In an upcoming slide under my references in sites to, uh, sites of interest, I have listed her her website and I have her website on this page also. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of the items that she creates and all of them are awesome. From the age of 18, 
She has been a professional artist completely devoted to her art. Okuma has work in the permanent collections of the Minneapolis Institute of Art, the Nelson Aikens Museum of Art, the Denver Art Museum, and the Smithsonian's National Museum of American of the American Indian. On the top is the ad, what's called what she has entitled, I should say, the adaptation to. And it is in the permanent collection of the Minneapolis Institute of Arts in Minnesota. It is fully is it is a fully beaded based on designer shoes using 15 aught and 13 aught cut seed beads with dyed porcupine quill, brain tan buckskin, antique brass sequins, and sterling silver cones and dyed feathers. And the ones that look like they have well, it's called Mocks for the 21st Century. And the other piece with uh, the Native American sitting in a chair, holding her papoose in a cradle, that was not titled. But as you can see the detail in it, if, again, if you go on her website, you can actually see the detail a lot better, but it's worth taking a look. And this is many, these, these are all the different resources that I have used in compiling this session. And they are worth taking a, a, a look at. And as I, as I had mentioned, uh, Jamie Okuna, she's on the bottom and I've also included, if you're interested in learning how to do modern day Native American bead weaving and bead embroidery, uh, Two Wolf Studio is contemporary Native American bead work. And she has numer numerous videos on her new YouTube channel, along with many others, but I just happened to highlight hers because I, 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 some, I have a favor of, of liking what she's, what she does and she makes, the videos are not long, but they are definitely accessible. So I thank you for watching and I look forward to our next session in which I will explore the works of the OGs of contemporary bead, bead embroidery. Until next time. Until next time, take care.